Weighed in at 170 this morning, it's 6 a.m. And what we're gonna do is actually go over to the lake today at some point, getting some swimming done. I went yesterday and I realized just how weak of a swimmer I am. I actually signed up for a triathlon. It's in August in Quebec, a sprint triathlon though. So 750 meter swim, 20K bike, and a 5K run at the end of it. I literally swam 100 meters yesterday and felt quite gassed. So we have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna be hiring a, a swim coach shortly, but uh, all pools are still closed here, right? So I'm just visiting the lake, getting some reps in, getting the frequency in. Today we have a 35K bike session, a full upper body session, and then we'll get some of that swimming in. You know the drill. We're just doing our daily sessions here, priming the body for today's work. I've been using these uh, feature socks. If you don't know about them, highly suggest them. I actually learned about them from watching Nick Bear's channel. Highly suggest you check out his channel. He's all about crushing all goals. He runs a supplement company, now he's training for a 100 mile race. Like I said in the previous videos, I, I do this every single day. So it'll be about 15 minutes of rolling with the lacrosse ball on the feet, on the shins, the calves, and the glute area. A little bit of, of hip flexors as well. I'll take the massage gun and I'll run up and down there too as well. About 10 minutes each morning. I already did my full stretching routine. I've showed you guys that plenty of times. So we need to go through that one. And I do that one every single day as well. So in total, I'm doing about 30 minutes a day of mo some sort of mobility work, six, about, about six days a week. I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram about what my current training volume is like. And currently what I'm doing is about 110 kilometers a week on the bike, split into three sessions. Then I'm doing about 30 to 33 kilometers a week of running split into four sessions and two to three of those sessions will be long easy work where one or two each week will be either short intervals on the track like 400 meter repeats 800 meter repeats or some hill sprints for weight training i was doing five hours a week it'd be a push session one hour a pull session one hour a leg session one hour and push and pull five hours a week in total. I just recently dropped that down to about three, three and a half hours a week, where it's now upper body one hour, three days a week, and I'll fit in some leg exercises like lunges, Bulgarian split squats, and still training core about two to three times a week in those sessions. Right now, currently, it's looking like we're doing about four to four and a half hours of biking each week. We're doing about two and a half hours of running each week and we're doing about three and a half hours of weight training each week. The main reason why I dropped the weight training down is my nervous system was having a tough time recovering and because I'm adding in swimming now. So I don't have any plan for the swimming yet. We're just gonna be going in, getting the reps in, and then uh, shortly I'm hiring a coach because our race is 11 weeks out now. We got 11 weeks until we do this sprint triathlon. Recently I've been lim limiting myself to only trading uh, from about 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then the rest of the day focused on my business, servicing my clients, training clients, making programs for them, and then fitting in my own training and reading on top of that. So that's basically how my schedule's been. I wake up at five or 6 a.m. I'll go through all my mobility work, I'll read, I'll go through the full routine, eat, trade from about nine to 11 a.m., get, then get my workouts in and train clients either in the morning or in the evening, depending on who I'm training. And then uh, do most of my client work, my online work in the evenings where I'll reply to emails or I'll dedicate one or two days a week to create all the programming for my clients. What do you know? More vector cereal with cookies and cream whey. This has been honestly my go-to like once a day, especially if I'm lifting weights because it's a perfect combo of the carbs with protein and it's lower in fat. All right, so I went to one gym that I am allowed to film at, that is closed, but as long as you don't show location that it's okay to film at. However, it was still closed when I went. So we're at the other gym, which we're not allowed to record at. So no training footage again. I'm, tr I'm trying to get the footage for you, but uh, next time, next time. It's 11.30 now, just finished up the one hour session. It was a heavy upper body session with core. Now we're just gonna head over to do our bike session. It's about 35K, easy ride. We're staying in zone two. I'm gonna have a shake with some fruit in between. 
and then head out onto the road. Having one scoop of grass-fed whey protein isolate, it's chocolate flavor with frozen berries and using the almond milk, about a cup and a half of almond milk, blending it up. Now for the ride, I'm doing two scoops of scratch, is about 40 grams of carbs, and one scoop of Vega Sport electrolytes. So in this container, one scoop has 400 milligrams of potassium and 100 milligrams of sodium. Just got in from the ride. It was uh, ended up being 37 kilometers. Total time was an hour and 17 minutes. Average speed was 28 kilometers. Max speed 65. That's fast as I've gone. And average power was 170 watts. Post run, we're just having two slices of toast with peanut butter and about a cup and a half of raspberries. It's 1.30 now, so I'm just gonna eat this while I reply to emails and service some clients. After this digest, I'm actually gonna go swim at about two or three o'clock, doing some 25 meter repeats. We're at the lake and today's session is 10 by 25 meters, but the big focus is on form, being able to float better. So we're just gonna focus on technique mainly and take as long rests as we need to. And that's the swim session wrapped up. Whew. It's a little chilly outside. It's not too bad. It's like 14 degrees Celsius. Water is nice. It's, it's great in there. Really focus on the, on the breathing. Focus on swimming more downhill with my stroke. Massive improvements from yesterday when we tried. So that's good. Just got to keep up the frequency. I'm, I'm going to be coming every other day. The car feels nice and warm, but we are straight shivering right now. <laughs> every time I talk. Yeah, we got a little, little shiver. That was literally only my second swim, so... Really pleased with, with that. I was making a three layer carrot cake. I'm gonna have some of that after. What I got is steak with these grilled veggies and uh, mushrooms, onions. This is the slice we're having. And then we're gonna head home and read. It's 7.30 now, I had dinner at my parents' place. It was great. The carrot cake was delicious, but uh, we're having this Italian herb and uh, olive oil crackers right here. Just gonna have some of these, snack on some of these while I watch some videos and then sleep around 9, 10 p.m. Right now, the swim is not so great for me. I ended up doing a 100 meter swim and it took me almost four minutes to complete and I was completely gassed afterwards. The main reasoning is due to breathing and form, of course. What I've been focusing on now is getting the breathing down with three strokes and just coming up for air, making sure I'm blowing out last minute as I turn the head to come up for air, just so I don't get that buildup of carbon dioxide in my body. And that's the big, biggest focus already. And I did that in my second session, focusing on that the whole time. And I was able to do way more, being less out of breath and swimming faster, combined with thinking about swimming downhill. So I'd have my head down, not completely underwater too far, but top of the head is just at the water just to get my legs to float because my legs are quite muscular relative to my upper body. So there's a tendency for sinking there. Currently what you could say is I'm only able to swim about 100 meters continuously. Meanwhile, in 11 weeks, the sprint triathlon is a 750 meter swim. Now, obviously I'm gonna have exponential improvement as I get the breathing and form down. Not to mention I don't have goggles. So when I swim, I just keep my eyes closed and my head down the whole time. I have the form goggles coming. If you haven't heard of form goggles, check them out. I can link them below. They are amazing because they essentially show heart rate on the goggle. They show your stroke rate, your distance, your speed. All that is listed in any metrics you want while you're swimming. So I'm gonna have number one goggles and great goggles at that, instant feedback goggles. Looking forward to using those, but they're gonna come in about a week. So I'm still gonna be swimming three, four times a week without goggles because we can't get any goggles at any stores because of the way the lockdowns are in Canada. I got a tri suit, a full tri suit. I'm gonna be ordering a wetsuit shortly in case we use that for the race. In terms of my goals for this, I don't have any real strong expectations or you know, there's no stress on needing to get certain times for this sprint triathlon. It's all about learning and having the experience of transitioning from the swim to the bike to the run with the race setting so I can get hydration down, I can get the movements down, I can understand what's gonna happen from stage to stage to stage and how I'm gonna feel from stage to stage to stage because I never biked after a swim. I'd run a little bit after a bike, but um, yeah, really excited to just see the, the times and how I feel in each zone during the race. Personally, what I would be very happy with is a 15 minute swim that's averaging two minutes per 100 meters, a 40 minute bike averaging two minutes per kilometer, and then a 25 minute run. I'm fully capable of doing the 40 minute bike and the 25 minute run right now. 
The swim, we are very far off from. Depending on how the transition times are, my final time could be anywhere from an hour and 20 to an hour and 30 minutes. And I don't wanna put any expectations in my head for a final time because again, I have no idea how the transitions are gonna go. So we're just gonna play it by ear. If things happen, things happen. It's just for fun. It's 9 p.m. So that's gonna conclude today's vlog. Subscribe for continued updates on the journey up to this race and the 70.3 race coming in 52 weeks to see my full progress from complete newbie all the way up to race days and just see how I make progress as we go, the lessons I learn, and more. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Honestly, thanks so much for watching. I, I really appreciate all the support that I get here and on Instagram from you guys. If you wanna see daily posts from myself, then follow me on Instagram. It's at Anthony underscore Pietrobono. Again, it's also in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.